Jesus comes back, man, he's going to live here. You know, he's going to he's going to make this earth his home. You know, when he was here before, it said he in Isaiah 53, it says he was sad. He should see the travail of his soul and will be satisfied. You know, but he saw all the wicked satanic things and he, he, he saw enough, you know. Enough to know how wicked that devil is and he deserves to be destroyed and that God's kingdom is needed and Jesus Christ will return and not be destroyed this time suffer but he will rule as king and he will make this world so beautiful he will be at ease and he'll make it in his home and he's gonna be so gorgeous man so beautiful you know it's like um uh, uh, also, Paul said that Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. It drew him even closer to the Father. You know, so the wicked things that the devil does to us, it, it brings us closer to the Father. The devil can do nothing against us. We are the ones that could harm ourselves by not keeping the commandments. But if we keep the commandments... The devil can do nothing. He can kill the body but cannot destroy the soul. The hairs of your head are numbered, Jesus said. That emphasizes the fact that you're not going to lose anything if you lose your life to the old Satan who thinks he can scare you into compromising. But you don't compromise, you know. So, it says in Ezekiel that... Uh, um, uh, the, and he will make the evil beast to see inside the land. No more evil. He's not going to allow it. And they shall reside in undisturbed resting places. And no one shall make them afraid. You know, Jesus felt such, such anxiety when he was on this earth because he knew exactly what he had to do. He taught, yes, but he knew that the devil was coming and that they were going to execute him. You know, so he, he couldn't enjoy his life on the earth. But he is the king, crucified, killed for righteousness sake. And he's the captain, number one. And he went all the way and was crucified like a slain animal. And he is the son of God, closer to God than any other. You know, no man has seen God at any time, Jesus said. But he that is in the bosom position with the Father, he has explained him. That's Jesus Christ, our King. Yes, our chief brother. And he will establish righteousness in the earth. Wait for it, my friends. It's coming. And, um... Uh, it says, uh, they, they, shall, they shall dwell in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. No one make them afraid. Life is going to be good. And any time Jesus Christ sees the wickedness, he's going to search it out. All over. All over the world. Through his kings and priests and through his princes that he sets in the earth. They're going to search out all the wickedness until there is none no more. It says in the psalm, seek out their wickedness until there is none. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to break in pieces the lying oppressors. And he's going to, uh, in Psalm 72, he, he shall save the sons of the needy, the poor and the needy. He shall save their souls from deceit and from violence. So that's how, that's how the kingdom of God is going to make this world a paradise, man. Yeah, we'll be able to eat from the trees of, the tree of life and live forever. That gives you rejuvenating your life, you know. And uh, the leaves of the tree are for the curing of the nations, the healing of the nations. So all the, on judgment day, when all the bad things come out, and, and uh, uh, he can use the leaves of the tree for that purpose, to bring them out, man. They can, they can, uh, uh, <clears throat> there, are, there are tools God has. That's what the leaves of the tree are for. They are to use to bring these things out, out of the subconscious. 
They're, they are uh, a quickening, life-giving. They, they, they can uh, 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 shoot life into it. So that some people didn't remember something, they become alive, become sensitive, and these things come out. It has to be done under the, under a, a physician care in the system in God's kingdom. That's where it's going to be safe. Not now. There's too much with the wickedness everywhere. Satan has covered the whole earth with his wickedness, and he's going to have to be locked up. For a thousand years, says that he that he may not deceive the nations anymore, till the thousand years are done, and then he shall be let loose for a season. So that's the that is the good news of the kingdom, and uh, 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 it's going to be a, a wonderful time. Please be there, because the other judgment that's coming on this world, it says in uh, uh, First Thessalonians. This is a judgment that comes to whoever it is that sees the, the return of Christ. Um, the first Thessalonians. Uh, yeah. Okay, now I guess it's this, second Thessalonians. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is Second Thessalonians. It says, see, in verse first, first chapter, verse six. See, seeing it is a right, righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah, there's some people that they just get their giddies off. They get jollies uh, off of hurting some people, innocent people. They enjoy that. That's the wicked ones. Those are the weeds that God is going to burn up in the fire. Not eternal torture, but he's going to burn them up. They're gone. The smoke of their torment will ascend up forever and ever as a foul memory before the whole creation of God. We don't want them back. We don't want them anymore. We're gone. They're gone. And we will not feel sorry. We will not wish they were here. We're done with them. God is done with them. And they shall never live again. Eternal damnation is the price, is their sentence, and it will never be lifted. Take heed. In verse 7, Second Thessalonians, first chapter. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. These people here, it says, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? Very plain, isn't it? Everlasting destruction. They are not coming back. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He comes to be glorified in His saints and to be admired in all them that believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Yeah, so. Uh, any, any, any of you that love righteousness, man, gather with Jesus Christ. It's going to get more strong. The more wicked they get, the more God is going to get strong. And the darkest hour is right before the dawn, you know. Remember that. So that's why Jesus said, when you see these things happen, raise yourselves up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. No time to be discouraged. We ain't discouraged, you know. And Solomon says, in, in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, it says, now, do not say that the former times were better than this. It's not out of wisdom you said that. The reason why he wrote that is because as time goes on, we get closer to the great day. We don't want to go backwards. We want to go forward, even though there is horrible things coming and trouble for the wicked and even for the righteous going to suffer. 
But hey, God, stay faithful with God, man. He will never let you die. He will never let you perish. You're faithful with Him. That's the whole thing. That's the whole crux of the matter. Don't let Satan tease you or deceive you. Faithfulness to God is everything. Everything. Now and in the future forever. Now, because why? You have a clean conscience. And God gives you His Spirit, which cannot be bought with money. And it's greater than anything. His approval is worth more than anything. And you keep that, you're all right. Don't let yourself sin. By no woman, no nothing what they offer you. Don't sin. Don't let them tease you with their little, little trinkets they put in front of your eyes. It's all vanity. It's all going to perish, and the kingdom of God is going to last forever. So you stay with him. And, I, and uh, uh, we don't know how many, it says in, in Revelation, it says, that I saw a great multitude which no man could number. Uh, out of all, mul all tribes, tongues, and nations, and nationalities, and, and pe all peoples. And uh, they had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And they come through that tribulation. And they have palm branches in their hands. Saying, salvation we owe to the one seated upon the throne. And to the Lamb forever, you know. So, hey, don't be deceived by this garbage and mind control and all the rest of the baloney that Satan has, man. Because you stay with God, you're going to have everything. And I don't care what they do. I don't care what they try to do. They, they don't want the word of God being heard, you know. But God is going to make sure it's heard eventually. Yeah. He will do everything in his time. The little one will become a, 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 a mighty nation, it says in Isaiah. Don't be discouraged from the day of small things, you know. God is going to be, be beginning his work. His strange work. Yeah, and all men will see the glory of God. It's promised. God doesn't tell lies. He doesn't mess around. Anything he says always has come true. And it will continue to. No matter how many lies they want to publish you about that you came from a monkey. And that the uh, Noah's Ark is a fairy tale. And that... Uh, uh, yeah, all those li li lies that they teach, you know, you didn't come from monkeys, you didn't, you didn't evolve, you were created. See, all of ancient history, it's just a small, it's just a little while ago. You know, I was reading in, uh, 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 in, um, First Samuel, no, it was, uh, was it Judges? Might have been Judges of Joshua, and they talked about the Stone of Abel, you know, it says, it's still there to this day, the Stone of Abel. So that, that, that may have been the gravestone of Abel. See, in the, so in the time of, of uh, uh, what, what, what was that? I think it was in the Judges, yeah. But in that time, they still had that. You see, so I mean, and then, uh, and then in, uh, in Jesus' time, they still had the, the graves of, uh, um, uh, I, Isaac, I forgot some of the, but the, still, still today we have different places that can be traced back to ancient history. But I mean, you know, when I was a little kid, I thought George Washington and Jesus Christ. I didn't know which one came before the other. But like back in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, days of Custer, there was people that remembered the found the, in the ni year 1900. There were people alive that remembered the founding fathers. That they remembered when they were alive. You see, our history, it's not that far back. One generation to the next, they remember. So it's not like it's way out of sight, but a lot of the history they teach is lies. And that's why people don't believe that the Bible is the truth. But it is. Everything can be traced back. All the artifacts are there. Nothing can be disproven in the God's Word. But the history and lies that they teach are going to come to nothing. And God's going to be shown to be the truth. It's, don't believe it's a fairy tale, man. It's real. This book is real. It's the truth. And God, the creator of heaven and earth, He wants you to know the truth. So study it. And stay with God and His Son, Jesus Christ.